Hello, this is Don. And this is Gina. And today, this is podcast number 118. With Focused Healthy Family. We are talking about juggling in the sandwich generation a day in the life. And we're, we're going to be putting in little excerpts from today, the, your journey today, which was a very busy day. Well, today I'm off to take care of quite a few different things. I've got my bag packed with a bunch of notebooks. So I'm heading out the door as I usually do. So here I go, out my lovely house. Should take you on a tour of what I see. So my journey of juggling job, kids, finding places for my parents to live as I'm in the middle of helping to support them. And we decided today to be outside because it's so nice out. But you may be hearing some lawn people doing stuff here because we are outside. But that's part of uh, a part of the day. <laughs> so um, you started your day out having to go. I had uh, a meeting at 930. So I spent the whole day with my parents my, yesterday helping my mom navigate, finding memory care for my dad which we had kind of decided on, but there's steps that need to happen and take place. Well, you uh, you start out with the uh, assessment too, right? That's right. I went there because they have, first they do a virtual assessment or, or an in-person, but we did it virtual with the nurse to determine his level of care. And um, that kind of determines the price for the memory care. I got to meet the nurse who's the director who I felt Meeting her helped me feel more comfortable and confident that this is a good decision. There you go. Went down there, knowing I'd be spending time talking to my mom about different things. So there was an independent living place that she had looked at. It's part of a continuous care retirement community. I am outside of um, Trinity Oaks. It's beautiful. There's this pretty garden on the campus. This is the front entrance. CCRC. Yes. you know what that means, Don? Continuing care retirement facility or community. Community. But do you know what that means? Well, it's it's a goes from uh, everything from independent living all the way up to like memory care. So you have and all the assisted nursing. living, the skilled nursing, all of that in between. Yeah, skilled nursing's at one end, independent living's at the other. So there are places you these are often buy-in places that you pay a fee kind of like you're buying a house and there's monthly fees too for maintenance and they this place has houses they call cottages they're small homes and two bedroom and one bedroom apartments studio different sizes and so people sometimes come into them in a house but there's often waiting lists like right now there's a long waiting list for two bedroom apartments and for houses people wait years they they decide the community they might want to be in and they go on a waiting list and so for my parents this has just come to the realization that the burden on my mom caring for him is affecting her health it has been and at this point we've decided it's going to be better for her she wanted to realize she wanted to be closer to me right now we're almost an hour and a half away from each other and for my dad to be in a good supportive memory care because he has a wander risk and he needs that environment where it's locked and secure and has more close attention. There is one 10 to 15 minutes from the house. The continuous care place has a waiting list for the memory care. And yet they have an availability for an independent living apartment for my mom, which we had looked at a couple of weeks back. She really liked it, but then wanted to hold off on making decisions. We were hoping to get my dad settled and then let her take time to decide. Does she, you know, does she want to just move to an apartment? Does she want a rental independent living place? Does she just want a senior community? As we unfortunately don't have the room for her to be able to like move in here or anything like that. And I don't that. think and she would want yeah, that. Yeah, she's, she's still very yeah, independent. So. She wants, she likes that she lives in a 55 plus community and she really likes the social activities and all the things they've been involved in. Yet since the past several years when she's really been my dad's caregiver and not able to just go to those things without having someone caring for him, she gets little social time. She gets out to book club once a month. 
exercise classes and things and but it takes a lot of effort too to do all that too well, you know, for she, her because she has to she only has caregivers so many hours yeah. a day so she but she wants that she wants to have a community where she can she wants a pool and and she does water exercise and she wants exercise classes and the convenience of it all being there and if her health changes and she needs more <laughs> level of care they have assisted living there you know they have other levels so the thing is there's long waiting lists. And so my mom reached out and said, well, someone else was interested in our only one bedroom that's available. <laughs> mosquitoes, sorry. Um, there's only one level available. There's only one apartment available. Oh. And my mom wanted the larger one bedroom, which there's a waiting list for. So if she signed on to the one just with the deposit to hold it, um, then no one else would take it. And then if a two bedroom or a larger one bedroom becomes available before she moves in or afterwards, then she, she can, can move up. She can do that. Um, so we had like a big decision to make yesterday, really fast. I was there till 10 PM. Mm -hmm. Got my dad to bed around six or so. And then we were able to talk. My dad was actually very lucid yesterday. I think it's when we come, you know, we come around somebody besides your mom well, unfortunately we went down there he wasn't you know he's i've been with him when he yeah. hasn't been it's because of his decline but so we had really good time together we're, we're not bringing this up to my dad yet because we need to have things in place yeah. I, I'm, I do i'm gonna sit down and talk to him and that can be a whole other podcast so yeah. all this happened yesterday we had to make all these decisions things happen fast we now have I gave the deposit when she has an application she has to fill out. She has 15 days to fill it out. There has to be the financial information attached with it. And she has to come in to be able to sign. She, I think she did say we could docu-sign if um, she couldn't get here. So I get to help my mom coordinate that. And I'm realizing I need to manage things and not overwhelm my mom. I had to tell her last night, set aside the Trinity Oak stuff. We got to do dad's FL2. <laughs> and I did actually get, my mom had some questions about this form and I got some more information today because they all understand how these things work. Um, so the FL2 is good for just 30 days. So we do need to have my dad moved in within 30 days of that being completed. So it's good we didn't get it filled out yet. So... Um, my mom was trying to fill out parts of the form, but the doctor should fill it all out. So I'm realizing I'm going to be the one kind of keeping track so that I can just say, okay, mom, this is the next step. Because just seeing, you know, this is overwhelming. She's 24 seven caregiving for my dad. Yes, she has caregivers coming in for five hours, maybe four days a week so that she can go grocery shopping. She can go to exercise class. She can go to book club, which is like all, that's the extent of her social life right now. And so she can go to her doctor's appointments and her errands. And, you know, my dad's got a neurologist and, you know, different doctors. And she has so much going on right now. And so she gets to go to exercise class maybe a couple times a week if she's lucky. And book club once a month. And grocery shopping. And that's not a lot for a very active person. And so I just feel good that I am able to step in and help them with this process. I leave there at 10 p.m. Don't get home till about 11.15 last night. I get up this morning. I climb in my hammock because I'm just tired and it's like, and this early. And then I made myself go walk and got ready to go to um, the facility, the continuous care place where I was meeting up with the marketing person at 9.30 and to get a tour of the smaller one bedroom and take pictures for my mom to, for her to be able to see it because she lives an hour and a half away and so she's got to get a caregiver for my dad and it's it's a lot on her last time she came up when we toured these places she had torrential rain driving up and then she had really bad i mean she had rain driving up and she had really bad rain driving home and that's a lot when you're 80 and you have some eyesight issues and so i'm trying to ne negotiate those tasks as much as i can so like she gave me the check last night and then i <laughs> I brought it up and then that same place I was going, I went back to at 1130 
for a job. I'm also, I've still been commuting into Charlotte, the 35 miles, three, mostly four days a week for quite some time now to work there. And I know there's other jobs in this area and I finally started seeking it out and realizing, you know, if my dad's going to be up here, I want close work anyhow. I've always wanted that with the kids because then I could work a couple hours. If there's an emergency, I could be home. I've done that in the past, you know, with the different crises we've been through, I've been able to. And so this facility, that's the continuous care place, is five minutes. Meanwhile, doing many other things. <laughs> I have to talk with the facility that's the memory care assisted living for my dad that we're getting him set up in and I've, I can go over there but they've got the bed for him and at this afternoon I have an appointment for kind of an interview for myself for PRN work as needed work as an occupational therapist so that right now I'm commuting into Charlotte which is 35 miles Usually I can do it in about 50 minutes. I've been doing that three to four days a week. And I'm going, I want to be up here. I want to be so that if my dad needs me as he's getting adjusted with his dementia, he, my mom's going to be far away dealing with the house and other things. And to, to be here, to be able to go in regularly, to check on him, to get him situated and accustomed. Well, I wanted to just break in there for a moment because it way back when you were talking about that you you got in the hammock you rested you took a walk the importance of through all this journey of the day is to make sure that you're taking care of yourself i had to make myself eat breakfast because when i'm anxious and got things to do i don't always have a big appetite so i you had made scrambled eggs i added an avocado to it sometimes when i've got all this going on i make my smoothie we talked about that on another podcast i drink chai tea i um i try to do some green tea because it's better for you than black tea and this is my caffeine boost and sometimes that helps me so i'm still drinking on it from all day yeah so and you know having a water bottle to take with me which i didn't do today and i'm feeling dehydrated yeah so you know juggling all that texting with you because at 10 o'clock we need to double check that our older daughter is up to go to work. And we told her we would give her one check on. She's responsible for herself. And she's doing pretty good at uh, getting so up on her own. So. so that's part of our day. It wasn't a therapy day for our other daughter. So these are things I normally do if I'm home or at work, you know, texting them, reaching out, calling them, coordinating it with you, so-and-so get their medicine. So this stuff is kind of always going on no so matter we do the podcast trying to tie that in we tied yeah something so different today was so we, we, we had this great idea it's <laughs> if i had a camera person with me and they could have filmed me it would have looked nice you know on my journey and the snippets are from the adventures i went on and having all these things in my mind which is why i talking really fast i know on those clips <laughs> yeah and <no. laughs> and being in the experience of this, right, I feel it's important to share when you're going through it because it helps other people be like, okay, you know, I thought, you know, every people have it together, you know, they handle it. Oh, Jean and Don, they got all together and they're handling stuff. And yeah, what does it really look like? You know, it looks like I wanted to go to meet with the woman for my mom moving in at this, coordinate that with going there for my interview but couldn't do that because of timing of the people's things they had going on. And then, um, well, like, you, you and know, so even though it wasn't very far away, I drove there and I came back and we try, and then I'm trying to make phone calls and I'm trying to call the person from the, there's, these are two different communities we're looking at for my parents. So it's, you know, different marketing, different. And I'm talking with her about things. I left her a message, but didn't hear back. Turned out she had, my mom had touched base with her, but I didn't know that. And then I'm trying to talk to my mom. My mom wants to see pictures. <laughs> and she, so she's calling me and I'm leaving messages for her. And then I'm feeling anxious and I needed to go pick up. My contacts came in at the eye doctor. I never got there. I wanted to go to the memory care to give her a check. But by the time she got back to me, it was like three o'clock. And she's like, well, you can come over right now. And 
Yeah. And so then she's like, well, tomorrow. I'm like, well, I'm in Charlotte all day tomorrow at work. And then I looked at Friday and it's like, oh, one more thing to add to my Friday because I have another interview 15 minutes away at 1 p.m. We got an online doctor's appointment at 11 a.m. And I'm not know how long the interview is going to be. And so she's like, I prefer it was 2.30 or quarter to three. And I'm like, I guess I'll be back from yeah. <laughs> or we'll have to reschedule or something it's been you know we've, we've been the most flexible people in the world i think because we we bend and flex towards you know we're like the, <laughs> we're like the the thing the waving thing in the you know the, it, it feels a lot more like cracking and pulling <laughs> i don't feel so loose and flowy yeah. a lot of times i and I, I I personally don't mind the flexibility and, and the juggling and the variety. I'm not the kind of person who likes doing the no, same it, thing day in well, and day out. Well, it would be kind out. of boring too. I think if we oh. just if we just we went eight to five, went to work uh, and came home and ate and I don't know. So we don't have that kind of life. I have me. dreams of why didn't I become an accountant? I could just sit <laughs> and look at numbers all day and not worry about people as much. Yet I'd be asleep on the desk. I was going to say you'd be. <laughs> People right, but it's still too long. I mean, I'm even sweet. when we finish this, I've got to publish this. You're going to cut the cut grass because you well, like cutting grass. It's like people, I day never kind of with people. Yet working as a caregiver, being a caregiver to parents, a caregiver to children, sometimes a caregiver for you. How do I, you know, taking care of myself? Yeah. Um, which I think I try to do. Yet I, in reality, it's often really on the back burner. Am I truly caring for myself, or am I avoiding? So how do you feel about these last couple of days? How do, what, what, how did it, how does it, how does that, what you've been doing, where you've been going, how does it feel? It feels like the beginning of a um, crazy adventure we're about to go on. I, I, I anticipate it getting super busy for a while and intense with the different things I'm juggling because mm -hmm. I'm looking at interviewing at at least three different places I might sign on with at least two of them for so you have to get trained and oriented in the building and the computer systems are different and everybody has different policies and procedures even though my work as an OT is the same wherever I go I guess that's what I was kind of look at is how you feel about what you're doing for your parents you know oh I well I mean does it feel rewarding or does it I know it's tiring because it's a lot of work. Well, I, I'm a I'm a helper and a caregiver and a giver and I like helping people and it feels good. What really feels good to me, we don't know how long my dad has. His yeah. dementia has gotten severe. His Parkinson's is where it's, sometimes it's hard for him to get up. Yesterday he walked a lot. We walked. We were talking about all the woodworking things he made and he walked into the bedroom closet. He's trying to find other pieces of furniture. I am looking forward to knowing I can go visit my dad more often mm -hmm. for shorter periods of time. I can fit it into my day. I can be around because who knows? He yeah, could well, have a month here. He could have another 10 years here. Well, and, and you know, him getting into that, that scenario might bring him down itself, you know, this kind of giving up, if depending, you know. Well, it could go either way, kind of in a way. He he does well when I'm around. He likes family around, but he does much better usually with me than my mom. I have been the person he <laughs> looks forward to seeing when he's been in the hospital and in rehabs. Uh, partly it's I'm a daddy's girl. I also know how to talk to him and have that expertise in working. Mm -hmm. And and because I know my father so well, you know, I when I work with a patient, I you know, I adjust how I talk to them based on their personality. Mm -hmm. I'll ask them what they did for a living, which sometimes I can guess. You know, I look at the person and how can I best help them for who they are. So that feels good, but it's more about my connection with my dad. Well, it'd be interesting to and, see how your how it changes possibly for your mom, being that she's not necessarily going to be there 24 7 with them you know and it's, see it's gonna, if that's going to improve her to him it, you know? there's a lot of unknown yeah no that's there's a, there's a lot of different ways this can go yeah. and i intention and you got to hold me to this is to write about it or use my phone to record this process because there's a lot of unknown and yet for my mom there's like possibility of a life again 
She likes the idea of Salisbury being a small town. They used to live outside of Newberry, South Carolina. She enjoyed that's, you know, telling me about all the culture that happens here, the music in the park and play. She likes that kind of stuff and hasn't been able to do that very infrequently. Mm -hmm. We've um, done a few things with her and she's realized she's had to have a caregiver to take my dad to him or have a caregiver with him. Stuff they used to do together a lot. And, and this town has a lot, is a more, more senior population too, which would be good, for, you know, it's still kind of a the age, I oh. think, for Salisbury. So, I don't so know it'd be good. statistics of that. I, I, I'm just being kind of general, but I mean, because it's... It's more that it's it's small. It's easier driving than Charlotte. Yes, she's going to have to find some new doctors or, you know, you know that's going to be the, the juggling and the challenge. And I'm looking forward to being able to hang out with my mom and it not being all about caring for my dad. You know, we, we I went over there. I don't know, we had a phone call not too long ago where my dad was asleep, so she could talk easily with me. She's like, I haven't got a job. I didn't know that, you know? And it's like, well, because, you know, every time we're together, it's all about it's, dad. It's, it is. And and how can we best help them? So I'm looking forward to being able to, I said to my mom, because she's like, I really need my massages. And do they have a hand and stone up there? Because that's where she's been going. I said, we'll find a place, mom. Maybe they do a mother daughter special and we can go together. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, she's going to have a chance to really kind of get to know our kids better, too, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, and, you know, to kind of give her her life back. She's 80, but I want her to be that vibrant 80 that she was, you know, at 70 and 75, that being able to do what she wants and, and enjoying this time in her life because she's taking good care of her health, yet caring for someone, it, it has an effect on us. And, you know, we talked today with someone who talks about family caregivers and people don't realize they're a caregiver when they're a parent mm -hmm. or caring, yeah. helping their parent out. You know, a kid with special need is extra um, involved versus um, just the typical parent with a typical kid. I don't know that that really exists. <laughs> I don't know if that exists. Um, yeah. And they don't think about it that way, right? So then you're not thinking about that. You're just doing like she's been married for almost 59 years. She can't, you know, she cares for her husband for better or for worse and sickness and health. This is what she has to do, you know? And she always, you know, she just, she knows I'm busy and, you know, I step in to help all the time and she, she doesn't expect it of me or, you know, she appreciates it. And she, and yeah. they've always been really and good. And yet she, she knows, you know, she, I wish she would ask for help more often. <laughs> yeah, and um, she's trying to just live day to day, and I'm I'm help hopeful for her that she feels overwhelmed now by all the decisions she's got to make and looking at you know selling your house and mm -hmm. and that me and my brother and other people can step in and support her and be like okay I'll take care of this that's why I was trying to handle some of these conversations and then just going to her and saying okay this is the step you need to take now and being that go between to just simplify it for her and yet in that process like I came to you and said you know what I need right now is some emotional support because <laughs> what is that <laughs> um, mind numb. are you giving me your brain because <laughs> I don't want your brain it would be very fascinating to have the experience of your messy. brain for a while and I think mine's the messy brain <laughs> you're very linear with your thinking my brain is like so what would you what would you say the and I don't know if the secret is right, but what what what's the secret about making it through your day? Um, when, you know, I mean, the, our life is kind of not chaotic, but just very rapid pace. I'd say for me, yeah, what gets me through music to suit my mood. Therefore, headphones because my family's not always a fond of my loud music that I like. <laughs> and turning everything into song my dad did that a couple times yesterday I'm like that's where i get it chai tea gets me through <laughs> our foundation of our marriage oh. and all the work we put into before we had kids when we didn't know what we were getting into <laughs> when it was, would we have ran like and we had no freaking clue remember how i used to get so crazed out about my appearance and how 
for things I wore and the things I stressed over when I was in my 20s. And Our first year of marriage was a little, uh, it was a rough, kind of rough because we... was. Yeah, we we not argued remember. a lot, but it's, you know, because you blocked it out. No, no because remember we that's what we were working on the communication and um. It was intense. Yeah, that's it. But that's me. That's I, we didn't have a house. We lived in tents. I am an intense person. Ask my children. <laughs> I overwhelm them. Too many questions, Bob. Too much information. Yeah, well, yeah, that's probably a good way to put it. Intense. And that just felt normal to me. Um, but looking back on that, right, things are. But we set a so, we set a foundation that was right. This was about what has helped me to get through the day. So that was one of the things. Yeah, it's our foundation. And the difficult first year of marriage that you experienced that I did not. And <laughs> um, time with my family, the relationship we have fostered with each other and with our kids means more to me than almost anything and i am so grateful for the time that we put in even though it meant oh, some financial hardship because i didn't work full time and you didn't you know we um and you know we didn't always have the money to do the things we wanted to do yeah and even for our kids sometimes yet and things were really crazy in our life for a while that it just, you know, did, mm -hmm. sitting down to have dinner oh, wow. it's a, turned into... It's an understatement, actually. <laughs> and, and, but now, you know, we've gone through all that. And even though there can be other difficult things that come along, knowing we can get through it, something about seeing your children to adulthood, especially to their mid-20s. And like, like, I'm proud of him because he's got this job and... He's successful yet it's because he's he's doing something he likes and when he has days off he plays just as hard as he works he goes to the mountains he does what he wants to do he follows his interests and i just seeing his life and how he lives it is a testament to me of why we parented the way we did why i chose to homeschool the way we did and you know even even our well uh, i was going to say it, it, it it's not just i mean he, he's his example is big but even our our middle child oh, yeah. you know she's following her path she just she had a a, a rougher you know with the, the ocd so yeah. she yeah. handles it differently yeah, but, but yet she she, and she, and moved up her own. she was 19 years old and then yeah, she, no. it's like okay moving back home and she found work and she's yeah the, and she's I mean, going to the zoo to volunteer I mean, so she's the same way about her and just and once they get in their 20s, there's a different relationship. And look yeah. at angst. Well, was... You know, I counted. What did I count? Because my kids are 11 years apart, I'm spending 18 years raising teenagers. And, you know, people talk about, oh, teenagers are hard. Um, I enjoy the challenges of teenage years. And yet it's beautiful to see it through to the 20s. If I feel like because I've embraced their teenage years and not made it put something onto it that I didn't like about it yeah that I see now we come through the other side well it, it, it you go through I think a little bit of I, I don't know how to how, how, you know they they kind of look at you like you don't really know what you're doing or, or, you know and then when they like when we our oldest now starting to realize the you know, dad isn't as dad can you help dumb me? as he looks, and looks or whatever and I, I know that's a kind of a crude way to put it but I mean they they start to recognize that we aren't uh, aren't you know um but i don't think i don't know that they ever felt that way they, well, they challenged a, and questioned us and got irritated they doubted they, 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 you know had some doubts about our what we said or do you know whatever which is and which i think is that, healthy. yeah which no is, I, if you want them to question that and important i've realized we've gone way off topic um yeah we have so and yet it's all on topic because you know we're in the middle part of the day we're yeah. in the middle of this we are navigating we're still parents you know, well, yeah, we still same. our parents of our 26 year old, our 22 year old, our 15 year old. And it looks different at different stages. Well, this journey you went through today was infiltrated with kids doing this and saying this and asking for this and going through this. You know, you yeah, right before you did this. Say that's outside of just going to work as an OT. I mean, the juggling, you know, I, I, I created notebooks. I had a notebook for my job searching because 
the facilities my job searching are very similar and some of them are the same as the facilities I'm looking at for my parents and having to keep things straight and organize and write things down and um, just having these skills to, um, and yeah, I mean, the flexibility and that's, you know, for me working part-time PRN, you know, I can't imagine doing this with full-time work, but there's, you know, the person um, with full-time work can't imagine doing it my way. And it's, there are other ways to negotiate that. And obviously it would look different. Um, um, and yet, whatever your life situation is, you know, it's, it's having that support. Like I started to say to you before you did this weird mind thing with your brain, <laughs> that I let you know that I needed emotional support, right? Yeah. I don't need you to fix or solve or remind me what I need to do. I need like, oh, wow, how's, how's that been? It's a lot. It's a lot, you know, when, you know, my dad gets really emotional and some days he just doesn't want to live in this world. Mm -hmm. He says some tough things that I get and yet it's a lot. And just realizing my parents aren't going to be here forever. And, you know, it's, I think that's something that's hard to, fully get until totally something well or something happens you know when he was in the hospital and he got pneumonia the last time i was like is he gonna get through this um well you know what what i kind of went through it was a weird feeling when my my dad passed away when i was 17 so he's been gone for quite a long time but when my mom passed in 2006 and she, yeah, exactly. it was a really weird feeling. I, I, because I, I tell people I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm an orphan now, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the weird part about it was, I think as, as human beings, we have this thing in our, in our, when our parents are around, we have that as fallback. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, you could, as much as you may not want to, you can always fall back and move it, move back go. to your parents or whatever. Or you can always go home. That's a good way to. And that was gone. And that was they really sold your weird. childhood house that they, you yeah, lived in your entire everything. You know, I have brothers and sisters. I, you know, I can fall back on them, but even that they're getting happen. They're getting older. Yeah. And so they're it's, they're it's, older than Don and they've got a, their own health issues. Kind of a lonely feeling in a way. Not that I don't not that I don't have you and the kids to fall back yeah. on, but just yeah, it's a weird feeling. I remember it. And uh like you became the, that generation, like when you grew oh, up yeah, with your aunts and uncles, you are now. Now I'm the uh, the old folks. Yeah. And yet at 65, you know, there are, I, I had a patient where I work, he's in his 70s and his dad came in to visit him. His dad is in his mid to late 90s, you know, <laughs> and so... You know, there are people your age and older who still have parents, and yet there are lots of people who don't, yeah. right? It, it's such a, um, and yeah, we each have different experiences with that in part based on our relationships we've had with them. And, you know, and I'm hoping, you know, my mom and I can even connect even more, you know, and have some fun together. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, I, I I don't know what the roller coaster ride is going to look like with my dad. I have the fortunate of knowing what Parkinson's looks like from yeah. the day he was diagnosed, having that personal experience. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping other people because I feel like I can help you know what questions to ask. I can help you uh, understand these things that for me have, it's just been inherent in me. And yet, even though I so much value other people's input, when my dad's had to have therapy, you know, because I know it's hard to make those decisions as the daughter, just like with our kids, you know, with their issues. Yeah, you know, I'm also an occupational therapist, but I need the support and input from others too, because it's hard to be objective. Well, it, it was like that story that the, the lady we talked to today, uh, she told us, if you don't know the right questions, it could affect the outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, and in her case, she didn't know the right questions asked. So they didn't think about rehab for her husband who was going through a lot and and so she got home with her husband and had to deal with somebody she, it was hard to handle. 
Well, there were stairs. Yeah. They just as simple as walk. not being able to get upstairs. And that's one of the first questions I ask when I yeah. assess a patient is, where do you live? Do you have steps to get into your house? Do you have steps once you're inside? Where's your bathroom? Is it yeah. accessible? You know, well, then basic ask, you know, life being able accessibility. To ask the right questions at, at, a, at a hospital or a facility. Well, but that, you know, yeah. And it, it's you like have... yesterday, you know, I was... We, mom, we, you know, I had this plan that we we're going to get my dad settled and then mom could breathe and go, okay, these are my different options, right? And we realized yesterday that, okay, we need to make a quick decision. And my go to was, let's get Darren on the phone because he can help us do that rational. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, my brother's on vacation. He's somewhere between <laughs> Ecuador and the Gal Galapagos Islands, literally. Um, and I was able to reach him by text, but you know, last night I'm like, okay, Gina, you got to pull this together. And so let's do this. And so I think with my mom, I'm like, okay, you want to wind up in Salisbury, right? That's the given, um, you know, what is it that really matters to you in living? And she's like, I got to have a pool. And I'm like, okay, these other places don't have a pool. And then she, you know, she really wants a community like she has. And I'm like, okay, this is your best bet for that kind of community. And you know, she's getting support from other family members who are saying, well, check out all these other facilities and make sure you compare. And it's like, for her, the location matters most. And this is actually a really highly rated facility. Mm -hmm. um, and it's five minutes from my house. Not and, even. <laughs> yeah, it's a, and it's uh, 10 minutes well. from the place my dad can be. And right now there's no memory care bed available for him, but that is something in the future, if it serves his interest, you know, mm -hmm. to get moved, we can. And it actually turned out to be much nicer than I thought it was going to be when I went inside today and toured it for the job. Um, so yeah, I had to kind of like, kind of go through that. Okay, you know, what matters most here? What is it you want, mom? Okay, if we put this money down, you can get half of it back. And it's, relative, you know, it's a very small amount of money considering the larger um, investments you'll be making. And, you know, realizing that right now, there are waiting lists, no matter where you are. I'm sure it's heavier in certain areas of the country, depending on what's available, but it tends to be when there are more people. Well, the baby boomers, right? You're you're kind of just beyond your siblings are baby boomers, right? Um my aunts and uncles are, but my parents were sort of at I think I'm excited. I'm really still at the right of the tail end of it. I'm yeah. still in it, but yeah. Um, so you know, the she, the woman we talked to today and that will be coming up in a future podcast, the near future talked about the statistics of the amount of baby boomers that are meet, so reaching like and, and, and the, the, the population to support and help them is so much less mm -hmm. that the resources, how are they going to be in place? Um, that you have this large amount of population that is in the age range where they often need help and assistance and, and different levels of care. And unlike prior generations where they had two or three kids so that there are plenty more people to support and help, it's going to take a reverse yeah. turn. And I had another thought and now I can think is done circling his <laughs> finger. <laughs> so this, this is the reality of juggling all of this, you know, and I several times I did curl in my hammock earlier in between some things today, you know, I came back after some interviews and meetups and we had to go on a call at two and I'm like I just need to play a game and be alone for half an hour and of course my daughter came down and asked me some questions and I did some emailing and I was so ready to just curl up and take a nap and you know I do that sometimes and sometimes that's what we need right so mm -hmm. it's finding a balance and and not judging ourselves not going oh I should have you know like today it's like I should have just drove over the facility you know, if she wasn't there, whatever, you know, then that would be done and it wouldn't be now on my Friday, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, but what does that serve me to sit here? Yeah. It's like with us with moving and it's, you know, the funniest thing about all this is we came this, I mean, we were so close to moving to Gaston County. We put offers on four houses. We had one under contract and all of a sudden we wound up in Salisbury. Our daughter now has robotics team about a half hour away um, yeah. um yeah, we're now closer to where my sister lives and i mean closer to my brother in pennsylvania we've got these great communities i think my mom's gonna like the town i mean it just it's like wow it's all working out perfectly that, that could be a whole nother podcast about follow you know following the flow well yeah, you know we, and, and letting go and stuff i beat myself up and when i have struggled and challenged yeah. yet 
knowing this too shall pass. Well, and think about if we would have moved to Gaston, we kind of, part of the reason was it was getting closer to her robotics. And, and that's falling and, apart. And, and, and so, parents. Yeah. And, and yet we all, were all like the traffic, the traffic, even though it's miles wise is closer to Charlotte than Salisbury is, yet it can take just as long yeah. to get there. And yeah. so there was this that resistance going on in us of not really wanting to move out that way. And it was sort of closer to my parents, but not any closer than we used to live. It was an ideal. And so we got to just give ourselves a break and go with the flow and, and realize wherever we're at in this process that we can move forward. We can still take steps and make new choices, no matter decisions we've made and that it's it's a matter of realizing that this will pass it's like having kids 11 years apart i know they're not going to be teenage forever you know when our youngest was little i knew she wasn't going to have a toddler forever i you know everything is always changing that's the only thing that's consistent is that things will keep changing yeah and so become part of our community find us on ask the ot don when are we doing another we're doing one june 3rd at seven o'clock and we're going to be coming live to you oh, from, from the mountains of virginia, virginia. not west virginia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not that far up no um um we're getting a vacation <laughs> by ourselves which we haven't done in 16 years to celebrate 30 years and so reach out to us let us know your questions on navigating this journey i am in the process of putting together what will be at least a pamphlet booklet about the questions to ask when you're specifically for the first booklet is going to be when your loved one's in the hospital and what how did what questions you need to ask while they're there and then in the next stages of things because that's when you think someone's healthy and then all of a sudden they're in the hospital and oh my gosh now we got all these decisions and mm -hmm. oh you go and in sometimes there, very quickly have to and you go that. in their house and like oh my god you know they wouldn't let me in and now i see why and now you know now i'm seeing signs of their decline so reach out, connect with us, follow us on Facebook, find us on Instagram as we grow our Instagram page up again. Check out our Tuesday tips, which is uh, we do by email, but we also on Tuesdays, we have a short uh, podcast that we do that gives tips for parents. And we're, we all, we're, we give tips for parents and also looking at the caregiving aspect of it. And are you too? If you're listening to this, where you listen to podcasts, you can also watch us um, and see our crazy antics on YouTube, as well as other YouTube videos that we're putting out on our channel. That we're doing trying to do shorts, as they call them. And remember, how you speak to your children and your family. Today. <laughs> how you speak to your children today shapes their future and it shapes yours as they become the person taking care of you which could be as soon as today <laughs> so from this 54 year old and this 65 year old who are sandwiching this life um, please join us again thank you